I'm Sarah and welcome back to Witch Fix. This is the fourth and final part of me talking about my experience playing Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen and I finally finished it guys. I finished it for the second time but it's definitely finished now. Although there, there are some things that I had to leave out because I felt like my blood pressure was getting to like a dangerous level but I'll talk about that in a second. So where I left off in part three was I was going to confront the dragon for the second time and I was basically just trying to level myself up enough that I could do the Bitter Black Isle Dark Arisen DLC without dying, which that was a lot of D noises. I'm quite pleased with myself for being able to say that. And um, so I was trying to level myself up because I tried it at like level 57, 58 when I first restarted the game and I got slaughtered so I went away and tried to go up a few more levels and I ended up going back to the uh, the Everfall and getting a bunch of wake stones I think like 12 uh, and they're quite heavy like they put a lot of weight in your inventory so I, I only took like three of them with me at any one time but I went straight back in um, around level 70 I think I was at this point went back through and at first I couldn't find where the gazer was because where I thought it was was actually like a little cupboard sized room with a man in it who was just this man like turns up throughout um, Bitter Black Isle just to sell you things uh, so I found him again but I'd, I'd completely lost where I was meant to go uh, and then I did find the gazer and I'd taken in with me uh, a newly leveled up Gwendomir and I'd taken in obviously two support pawns one of whom was a mage to do like healing spells and stuff and they also specialised in holy magic which I thought was quite helpful because it meant that because you can only cast holy affinity on one person at a time so I thought having them would also be helpful and then I also brought in uh, a ranged like an archer pawn just because I wanted to keep my options open and have some some ranged attacks and I had consulted the wiki page for the gazer and I knew sort of um, how to attack it uh, and what attacks to use to my best advantage so I went in and I'm pleased to report that I killed it on my first go. Uh, that was due mostly to the fact that obviously I'd levelled up. Uh, Gwendomir was levelled up, so we had a lot more uh, weight behind our attacks. We could definitely do more. And my support pawns as well were quite higher level ones, so that was pretty good. I'd also outfitted them with gear. Uh, not gear that I'd bought, but gear that I just picked up along the way and not sold. Because by this point I had like over two million gold and I decided there wasn't really much point in selling the odd pair of socks that I stumbled across in a chest. So mostly my strategy was to stand directly underneath the eyeball and cast High Sizem which makes giant peaks of rock appear out of the ground and stab it and also to get it to stab itself with its own tentacles which uh, was quite funny and <laughs> once I got past that I went directly out of the door out of that general boss area which only unlocks once you've killed the fucking thing and I got to a little hallway where the weird man was again and there was a door that led back up to the surface because when you're on Bitter Black Isle at like the harbour where you appear there's like the front entrance to the dungeon which is where you first go in and there are two doors that are locked from the other side and as you progress through the dungeon you get to those doors and you can unlock them and it's like a shortcut back in so you don't have to go from the beginning which was wonderful so I'd completed like a third of Bitter Black Isle by my reckoning at that point which was pretty good uh, I then continued on warily uh, because it is quite scary playing something that you know that a giant very overpowered enemy could just appear around any corner at any given time and, and massively slaughter you especially when a lot of those enemies look very scary as well um like giant saurians which are like big lizard things and uh you know horrible creatures so i went through there i explored down a number of dead ends to just various rooms where i found uh, some of the recollections of the Abyssin, which are like stone tablets, which I thought was the main mission to collect those, but apparently it wasn't because I managed to finish the whole thing with only having like five of them. We got along quite fine. We were we were tearing along at a pretty good pace, and then I got stuck again. At this point, I was having quite a lot of difficulty with um, the corpses of fallen enemies drawing more enemies, which is a feature of Bitter Black Isle. And as you go deeper into the labyrinth. Uh, it happens more often and the enemies that they draw are more powerful. So instead of this gigantic wolf occasionally showing up, a cursed dragon would show up, which was like a regular dragon, but skeletal and covered in like purple fire and lightning and very hard to kill. So basically I just ran away every time that happened, which worked fine. 
Um, I got stuck again because the second that I left that second like safe area that you find after defeating the gazer, I was trying to cross a bridge when the motherfucking Grim Reaper turned up and instantly smoked my entire party. Like all of my pawns just instantly died and vanished. Uh, and so I had to run away and respawn a bunch of pawns. And I went away to Google this because I was like, how is it okay that he can just kill me in one hit and and you know how am I going to get past that and it turns out that the Grim Reaper character or death um is like a random occurrence and it, it doesn't happen every time he does just show up and I was like oh bum and then I went back to the bridge and he wasn't there so I, I progressed then I reached after a number of encounters with quite powerful enemies including a cursed dragon uh, I reached the Forsaken Cathedral which is where you fight like the second boss battle to open the second door back to the pub area uh, and that is apparently called a Dark Bishop it basically just looked like one of those big skeleton wizard things uh, except he was controlling a dragon and basically the the way the fight works is he goes into the dragon you kill the dragon and he pops out and then you hit him for a bit and then he goes back into the dragon rinse and repeat until death and the first time he managed to kill me and i had to use a wake stone because i got caught in quite a powerful spell that just kept flinging me up to the ceiling and i died but then i managed to find a way to one hit kill the dragon essentially i, I had a new spell which was calling down meteors and as soon as he telegraphed that he was going to begin like raising the dragon from the dead which is quite a long convoluted spell during which he can't attack you i would just charge up my meteor spell and as soon as the dragon came up i would hit it with it and it would die uh, so as long as i could charge that spell i was pretty much okay and i got through that without further incident the levels after that were much harder and it was quite difficult because I knew that there wasn't going to be another door back so I knew that I was heading towards the final fight and that if I wanted to go back to load up on curatives um, you know health items and things then or if I had to like respawn pawns then that meant going all the way back and potentially going through areas that had become more dangerous since I last passed through them because I'd killed things so I was hoarding my curatives um, I did this by like I was carrying all the good items which meant that my inventory was very full and everyone else was making do with like lower items and then during fights I would kind of drip feed them one or two curatives which worked quite well. I'd also stocked up on things that refreshed the health of the whole party so that I could heal them all when I needed to and um, so that was quite useful and mainly I got through the next part by just running away. Um, <laughs> because um, every time a big enemy showed up I would just kind of sprint to a door and go through it and just avoid having to fight the big enemies or the sort of swarming little enemies that can kill you. I got to a place which is uh, called on the wiki the Fallen City which is basically a, a city underground uh, and you go around there and you kind of find out things and it's sort of suggested that there's been various sort of hints and you've come across the bodies of many other arisen who are scattered throughout bit of black isle and you sort of start hearing things about how the arisens didn't get very far or how they suffered and died and it doesn't generally just make you feel like you can do the levels because everyone's just sort of lying dead on the floor going oh I, I really tried but I should have brought more soup with me I was such an idiot but anyway I got past that throughout this you can use um, special rift crystals to restore rift stones which is how you hire on new pawns but you can't like fast travel between them so by the time I got to the end I was quite low on curatives I had like maybe a few but I was quite concerned that I would run out during the final fight and then I went into the final arena which is the bitter black sanctum and that's where you encounter Damon which is like the the evil that it's been talking about the whole time you've been playing the game uh, essentially um Damon looks like I guess he kind of looks like Lucifer from Get Out of Hell, but basically like a big guy with like talony, liony feet and bat wings and a tail. So sort of like Beast from Beauty and the Beast, but with like bat wings. And he's very big and very scary. And apparently he, you get some backstory from this, the lady who brought you to the island was his beloved. 
and that he was a past arisen and that he couldn't make the choice that the dragon gives you which is sacrifice your beloved or fight the dragon he was like i guess he couldn't face the dragon he couldn't make himself do that but he also wouldn't sacrifice his beloved he just wouldn't make the choice and so he was cursed and turned into this like monster he's a pretty scary guy to look at i i have to be honest uh he has like this weird like dragon face on his chest like he's some sort of like mutant dragon thing it it's very strange and um so you fight him and there are quite a number of curatives just kind of scattered about on the ground and there is a wake stone that you can find behind his throne which was incredibly helpful and i eventually managed to get through the fight by sprinting really far away from him charging up a powerful attack while hiding behind a rock and then launching it at him so it wasn't particularly dignified but it, you know it got the job done and that was me finished uh i basically completed bitter black isle in the sense that i had gotten to the end of all the areas that there were to explore and i had killed him apparently to get like the quote unquote real ending you have to play through bitter black isle again and then you will fight Damon again but there's slight differences to his form um to the tactics you need to use and to some of the things that he says so um it's sort of like you're fighting i guess this kind of evil entity which has taken shape within him i have no interest at this time of doing that because i've played the entire game twice already and i feel like i've had enough but um i will be going back to it obviously at a later time um after i'd finished the first go through of bitter black art i returned to the main game uh, i had enough wake stones to just enter the end game for real this time so i did that so the next time i come to play the game i could just hit new game plus and start all over again essentially uh, but one of the major differences was once you've done the end game part and you get to the end where you meet the other arisen who is currently acting as like the overseer it was me from my previous playthrough i was wearing the gear that i had equipped the last time i had gone through the final mission and it kind of made me think about how maybe what the game is telling me is that the me that i was playing as on new game plus was actually like the gwendamere form of me from before and that it was now kind of this cycle because each me that came to this end game portion would be stronger and would have more experience um so i thought that was quite an interesting idea and it was weird seeing myself again um uh, because obviously by this point i've been through like the game again i had a lot of better gear and i just looked quite different uh, so i finished the game and uh, when i put the disc back in the box i wrote myself a little note on a piece of paper and tucked it in saying do not start new game start new game plus because um i don't want to have to go through it as low level again i feel like it's unique and it's the kind of game that you wouldn't just start a new game every time you would maybe just if you wanted to play it again do new game plus and then you'd be able to still create an entirely new character if you wanted to but it would layer up on itself the the number of times that you've been to the bitter black isle and the number of enemies that you defeated there and the different things that you've done previously would have an effect on the game that you were playing over again and i thought that was quite interesting quite a unique feature uh from a witch fulfillment point of view it definitely fit that brief uh it was really nice to have two magical paths so mage and sorcerer which were very different and to be able to play as both and change halfway through if you really wanted to uh, that was really good uh, i really liked a lot of the spells that you can use especially as a sorcerer they're quite devastating and quite uh really cool to look at like high Giselle, which is sending like a kind of river of ice through the air to stab things which was really satisfying especially when you use it on a cyclops's eye i also like going out and gathering like herbs and different magical things and combining them to make all my own health potions and stuff it just made it feel uh, more immersive more interesting playing as like a witchy character when you're making all your own health potions to give to your your pawns and things although i do wish that there was crafting of like weapons and armor as well instead of just um being able to upgrade items that you've bought or found uh, i think it'd be cool to like take um looted items from creatures and like use them to craft like better armor uh, in a way that made more sense because i think there is a way to like use them to craft things but 
Although I played through the game twice and looted basically everything that I could get my hands on, I never actually had enough to make an armour item on the combination screen. It never gave me that choice, so I think that would be interesting. Um, it will probably be a good long while before I end up playing this game again, simply because it, it took quite a lot out of me to play. I enjoyed it a lot more the second time through, because I feel like the first time you play a new game and you're trying to get used to all the new... Um, mechanics and the new ideas behind it and the plot and everything it just feels like work i mean it's fun but at the same time you have to give it a lot of your attention you can't just breeze through it and play it mainly for the story or character interactions so once i'd finished playing that i instantly went back to dragon age inquisition which i could definitely play one-handed at this point because it's like my sixth go around and i'm basically just playing it now to romance random characters who i haven't previously romanced and I feel no shame in that. But at some point, yeah, I will probably, I will definitely dig back into um, Dragon's Dogma because although it's more of a serious game where you definitely have to work at being good at it, it definitely offers a lot in terms of like enjoyment and a lot in terms of spectacle. So I uh, heartily do recommend. And I'm now moving on to playing some of the other games that have built up. Uh, in the meantime, while well, I've played it twice in a row, um, once I've finished Inquisition to just kind of wean myself out of the headspace of Dragon's Dogma, I'm launching into some other games which have more witchy themes in it, so stay tuned for those. I hope you've enjoyed this episode and do get in touch if you have any ideas of other games that you'd like me to play or look at in any way. You can get in touch on Twitter at Witchfix and on Gmail, which is witchfixpodcast at gmail.com. Uh, remember, you can also donate to my Patreon and just, you know, send me any links or anything that you think I'd be interested in as well. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye. Bye.